Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Money at 30, and it's time for another roundup of personal finance, credit card, and travel news. As always, over the past few weeks, there's been plenty of news that could affect your wallet. So I've compiled some of the top stories from this past month to share, including some new credit card offers, a new account coming from Apple, and more. First up this month, US Bank recently released a unique rewards credit card that definitely has some pros and cons. In October, US Bank launched the Shopper Cash Rewards card. Headlining this offering is a 6% cashback category that includes two of two dozen top retailers, including Apple, Amazon, Chewy, Disney, Target, Walmart, and many more. Each quarter, cardholders can choose two of these brands to earn 6% back on up to $1,500 in combined category spend. On top of that, the card also earns 3% back on your choice of wholesale clubs, gas and EV charging stations, or bills and utilities, up to $1,500 in category spend per quarter. Plus, all other purchases earn 1.5% cash back. While that 6% tops what even most of these brands' own rewards credit cards offer, the $1,500 per quarter cap does limit you. Also cutting into the profit potential of this card is the $95 annual fee, although this is waived for the first year. Conveniently, US Bank does include a rewards calculator on their site, but be aware that the figure it spits out includes the current welcome bonus and does not account for the annual fee you'll face in subsequent years. Overall, while the US Bank Shopper Cash Rewards card is certainly interesting, its value will heavily depend on how much you shop at the retailers featured in the 6% category. So while it may be worth a look, there's a good chance that there's a more generic rewards option that will better suit you in the long run. Next, if you've had your eye on the Chase Sapphire Reserve, then you should probably know that the current intro bonus is the best it's been in five years. When the Chase Sapphire Reserve debuted in 2016, one of the factors that made it an instant hit was the 100,000 point bonus it offered. Since that initial offer went away, there have been some potential card holders who have continued to chase it, no pun intended. Well, while that 100k deal still isn't back, the Sapphire Reserve's current 80k offer is the best it's featured since those early days. To earn these points, new card holders will need to spend $4,000 in purchases on the card within their first three months. As a reminder, since Sapphire Reserve customers can redeem points for 1.5 cents each via the Chase Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal or Chase Pay Yourself Back program, these 80,000 points could be worth up to $1,200. Of course, you should also keep in mind that the card carries a $550 annual fee, although that's partially offset by the annual travel credit of up to $300. Currently, there's no announced expiration date for this enhanced offer, but those interested in the card may want to take a closer look while this deal is still good. After entering the financial services arena with the Apple card, Apple will soon be introducing a high yield savings account with Goldman Sachs. Recently, Apple announced it would be rolling out a new high-yield savings account for Apple Card customers in the coming months. Once launched, users will have the option to automatically divert the daily cash they earn to their savings. Additionally, customers will be able to make regular deposits to the account as well. At this time, Apple hasn't specified what the APY for the account will be. That said, looking at Marcus by Goldman Sachs for comparison, they're currently offering 2.5% APY, and that's likely to go higher in the coming days following the most recent Fed rate hike. In any case, if you're an Apple Card customer, it may be worth keeping an eye out for this upcoming feature. In a twofer of travel rewards news, Delta and Starbucks recently announced a partnership, as did Alaska Airlines and Lyft. As you may have seen in my YouTube short, Delta and Starbucks are now offering reciprocal rewards to customers. By linking your Delta Sky Miles and Starbucks Rewards account, you can earn one mile per dollar spent at Starbucks, as well as score double stars on Starbucks purchases made on days when you're flying Delta. Even better, those who link accounts by the end of the year can earn a 500 Sky Mile bonus, as well as 150 bonus stars after they make an eligible Starbucks purchase. In similar news, Alaska Airlines and Lyft are also partnering up to reward riders. Typically, those who link their accounts will earn one Alaska Mileage Plan mile for every one dollar they spend with Lyft but through the end of the year, this is being doubled to two miles per dollar spent. Unfortunately, Lyft now only allows riders to select one travel reward partner option at a time, so you'll need to choose between earning Alaska, Delta, or Hilton points through the app. Finally, we'll finish up with the absolute sexiest topic of them all, tax brackets. Like most other years, the IRS has announced adjustments to the tax brackets for the upcoming tax year. However, what makes 2023's revision unique is the size of the increases. Amid well-documented inflation, the limits for each bracket have increased by about 7% next year. Also, the standard deduction will rise to $13,850 for single taxpayers and to $27,700 for married couples filing jointly, marking an increase of $900 and $1,800 respectively. Keep in mind that these figures won't affect the tax returns you file this upcoming tax season, but instead will impact those in early 2024 after the 2023 tax year is complete. Of course, for more info on this topic, I'd recommend visiting irs.gov or speaking to a tax professional. 
Hopefully this roundup gave you a better idea about what some of these updates are all about. But for more on these stories, I'll have links to some of my articles in the description box down below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe because we have new videos almost every week, and we'll have roundups like this one on the first Thursday or Friday of every month. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time here on Money at 30.